Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, we're gonna cover how can you use calculations in Tableau to help you compare today or yesterday or really any date um, to an equivalent comparison date. And so I'm being pretty specific with my language there because I'm not just saying the same day last year, but I'm saying the equivalent day of last year. Uh, so to give a little backstory to this, I was working with a, a client named Randy. What's up, Randy? Uh, it, he is in the restaurant space, uh, helps run behind the scenes for a pretty large restaurant chain. And something that they wanted to be able to do was to say, hey, for the equivalent day last year, what were our sales like? So if our sales at this location was $700 on this day this year, oh, it was $732 last year or $406 two years ago, right? And so what we're trying to do there is compare this day to the equivalent day. So what does that mean, right? Because like, so when I'm shooting this, it's a Thursday. So I'm not just saying, hey, go back to February, what is it? February 6th, 2024, because that would be a Friday or something, I think. I don't know. I can't remember how the date shifts work, but it's not the same day of week. And if you work in a you know business where there's a big difference between a weekday and a weekend, comparing a Thursday to a Friday or a Thursday to a Saturday or a Thursday to a Monday, that would be a bad idea, right? Um, so what we're trying to do with our calculation was to say, hey, for this same Thursday last year, the date might be off by one or two days, depending on if it's a leap year or whatever. Um, what did sales look like then, right? Are we up, are we down, whatever. So let me talk you through an old version of this that I did and why this version can fall apart pretty quickly, okay? So I've got an old blog post somewhere. You could probably dig it up if you really wanna dunk on me. But uh, basically in that blog post, I wrote out that, hey, you could just say something like, go back 364 days exactly 52 weeks ago and compare to that day. Right, so in this scenario, if the latest date in the data set's February 5th, that's yesterday, and that was $714, what was that same day a year ago? However, notice that this is actually not the same as, as what you saw in the initial chart. The initial chart said it was $732 on the equivalent day from last year, but then this one says $37, which is not very good. Um, so, so what happened there? Well, okay, the problem with just trying to use the lookup function and go back 364 days is what if you're missing a day or in this case, numerous days in your data set. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, if I scroll my way on back up this worksheet, I will eventually find situations where there's a missing day, right? So like November 30th jumps right to December 2nd. There's no December 1st, okay? And that's gonna cause a problem because the lookup function, let me go ahead and pull up the formula that you're seeing in the right column of this table. This says that it should be the sum of sales lookup minus 364, right? So what that means, the lookup function in Tableau allows you to look up points, you know, going forward or going backwards and then pull them, uh, you know, Hold them in this case against that same day. So this says, in theory, what this is saying is go back 364 days, but the reality is that it's actually going back much farther than that because there are missing days. Okay. I don't know how much sense that makes, but basically the minus 364 only works if you can guarantee there's a row for every single row of data. So can you do that? You can. You could have a calendar table that you join into your data set, and then there'll just be like blank values for days where there was nothing. And that's okay. Like that's that's a valid approach. Um, but just the situation I was working on with this client, like didn't allow for us to do that. So we needed to find an alternative, right? Um, Quick side note before we actually jump into the build. So this workbook is available for download. You can check that out in the description down below so you can build this out and follow along. In our scenario, the latest day in the data set will always be yesterday, not today. So if your data goes through today and you wanna set up something like this, you may need to adjust your calculations slightly from what you're gonna see from me just by a day probably. Um, but I did just wanna point that out. And, uh, or if it's not always a set date, if it's like, it could be yesterday or it could be two days ago, right? Um, <laughs> that makes your life a little more complicated, but basically you could use some level of detail expressions to help you out with that. I'm going to put a link in the description below that talks about how to use level of detail expressions to find the maximum date in a data set and using that as an anchor and then going off of that uh, might be helpful. Okay. Um, 
Quick side note, just I mentioned that this came up while working with a client. If you check out this info button up here in the corner, you can work with me and I can help you with your Tableau stuff. I've been doing this for more than a decade. Um, so if you're stuck on a problem or you just want to dig deep and learn a bunch more, we've got five different classes that we teach every quarter. So um, we'd love to connect with you there. And you're always welcome to just drop comments here as well. Okay, so let me show you what our solution is going to look like. In our solution, let me scroll down a little ways here. Um, right? It, it kind of looks similar on the surface, but the behind the scenes is pretty different. So let me just start off by kind of showing you a quick snapshot of what that formula looks like. And then we're actually going to build this from scratch and kind of break down what's happening here. So instead of just saying, look up minus 364 and go back, like a calculation like this is going to provide us the flexibility to have missing days and not have to sweat it because we're going to be saying, hey, you know, go off of yesterday as our anchor date and then go back 364 days or 363 days. And it's not a big issue whether or not, you know, uh, what am I trying to say here? If there's a missing day, it's not going to be a problem. Okay. Um, that's probably all the proof you need. I built in some calculations just so you could see this in real time. So if I was like, I found one day where the sales amount was $1,369. That happened on March 17th, 2023, right? So with the lookup, if I said, hey, find that day where the sales was $1,369, uh, it got confused. And it said May 2024, not March 2023, right? So that's sort of the the missing days at work there is... Uh, it, it, you know, it, it was off by almost two months uh, on the lookup. So bit of a problem. Okay. Anyways, I think you get the point there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to belabor that point any further. So let's go ahead and build this out. So um, first of all, I guess we just put our sales field on tag. So let's get started with that. And uh, cause I think, yeah, we always just use the basic sales field. Okay. So first step for us is we're going to create a calculated field, which I'm going to say shifts the dates of prior years. So what I mean by that, and, and you sort of, this is the snapshot that I showed you. So let's call this our, our date calc. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we'll say, okay, if the date diff, uh, of day of order date, and this is a, just so you know, this is a specific hard code or not hard coded, but it's a calculation of order date, which makes sure that it's always synced up with yesterday being the latest date in the data set. Um, so you're not, if you're ever using like just base superstore and you're like, why is this not working? That's maybe why. Um, so the date diff and day between the order date and then yesterday, which I'm just going to code as today minus one, but if you want to formalize that some other way you can, is less than 363, then just give me the order date. Okay. So something I like to do as I write if statements is just throw an end and just kind of take it line by line to make sure if you have an error and you're like seven lines deep and you're like, oh my gosh, where is this? That could be annoying. So if you just do it like this, you're fine. So uh, I'm sorry, this should be less than or equal to 363. So basically, if... Uh, you know, if it's within the last 363 or you know, roughly 364 days, then just give me that date, right? We're good in that case, okay? Um, the reason you don't say 364, and this really threw me for a loop, this took us a while to figure out, is because the date diff difference between the order date and the last date in the data set, it's not one, it's zero. So zero through 363 gets you 364 days. That, that alone took me like, you know, back and forth and editing and trying different things. That took me like 15 minutes, 20 minutes in real time to figure out. Now you don't have to deal with that yourself. You just get to learn from, from my hard-earned uh, lessons here. So good for you. Um, okay, so next up we will say else if, and then let's just steal this because we're just going to modify this. So I will say else if uh, the date diff in day between the order date and yesterday is less than or equal to 727, then not just order date, but we're going to say date add day 364 to order date. Okay, and you might be looking at that and thinking, what in the heck did we just do? What did we get ourselves into here? So what this is saying is if, it, if the data goes back more than one day, sorry, more than one year, but less than two years, add 364 days to that. Right. So what would an example of that be? So if I went back to uh, this is 2024 is a leap year. Pretend it's not a leap year. So if I go back to, uh, to January 1st, 
just pick a different day, January 2nd, uh, 2024. And if you add 364 days of that, that would get you to January 1st, 2025, assuming no leap year, right? Um, so does that, I don't know if that makes sense, but basically you're saying, okay, the equivalent day of January 2nd this year is January 1st of last year. Or in this case, actually, I think it would be January 2nd would be the equivalent of New Year's Eve because uh, it would actually be a two-day difference because of a leap day. But screw leap years. Those, those always make everything more complicated than they need to be. I think you get the general point, right? Um, okay, so the next step would be else if, um, else if it's less than or equal to 1093, so that's basically close to three full years there, then don't just add, um, don't just add 364 days, but add 728 days. Okay. And the final thing I'm going to do in this scenario is I'm going to convert it to a date. It would, it would come out as a date time function because that's what happens when you do like bring the date add function into it. So I want to make sure it comes out as just a standard date function. I will say okay. So what will be interesting here is watch this. So if I put my date calc on rows, I right-clicked and dragged it to rows, and I select MDY, month, day, year, and say okay. So it says that February 5th, 2025 has 1,851 um, dollars in sales, right? Is that right? No, that's actually not right. If you go back here, it's not that much, but that is the sum of all three years worth of sales. They're all currently showing up under February 5th, 2025, right? So if I actually put our original order date field and through month, day, year of that order date here, it would actually show you here are the three different days that are currently rolling up to February 5th, 2025. You've got February 8th, 2023, February 7th, 2024, and February 5th, 2025. Kind of interesting, right? So now how do we get these to display across several columns where you've got current year, prior year, two years ago? So that's a very similar but slightly different calculation, okay? So let me copy our original formula because we're going to be able to we're going to be able to go off that a little bit. So I'll create another calculated field. I'll call this our year label calc. And let's paste this in here. In this scenario, okay. So I don't think we'll have any future data in our data set, but just to safeguard against that, I will just say, hey, if the order date, uh, sorry, let's just all be on one line here. Okay. If the order date is greater than or equal to today, then out of scope, right? I'm only trying to look at yesterday on back for a few years. Okay. Else if, okay. And now, so now I'll say else if the date diff in days um, between the order date and yesterday is less than or equal to 363, then we're talking about the current year, right? Okay. Next up, otherwise, you know, if it's, 364 to 727, then we're talking about the prior year. Okay. And then if it's on up through 1093, then we're talking about two years ago. If it's more than 1093 days ago, then it's out of scope again, right? We're, we're not going back that far for the sake of our analysis. Although if you want to have more than two comparison years, you could code more years onto the end of this. So we'll say, okay, let's put our year label calc on columns. Let's put a copy of it on filters and just exclude the out of scope because we're not going to be dealing with that right now. And then, do, 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 do. All right, let's widen this out a little bit. Okay, here we go. So we've got $714 in sales for the current year, $732 for the prior year, $406 for two years ago. And then a really another cool thing you can do is you can actually put the original date field on tooltip now, right? So if I right click and drag order date to tooltip, uh, can I do month, day, year? Is this going to cause a breakdown in the system? And it looks kind of silly with, let me just convert it to just a date field. I don't need date and time. So for current year, the order, not surprisingly, the order date is February 5th, 2025, but the comparison date from the prior year is February 7th, 2024. You get to see that on hover over, which is pretty awesome if I do say so myself, right? And so then you can see like, yeah, there are going to be gaps in that too sometimes, but it, it doesn't break down as a result of that. So I have to say like, 
I was actually pretty proud of this once we built this all out. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And there'll be some applications for this. Is everybody going to use this? No. Uh, certainly there are people out there that are not dealing in industries where they would need this. But I think hopefully a lot of you have found this and are going, yep, this is going to be helpful for me. Um, so a couple of closing thoughts for you, kind of back to our classes. First of all, you may want to check out our passport program if you're like, that was cool. We're going to learn more of this kind of stuff in our classes. Uh, so our passport program, it's half off all of our classes for a six month period. We have five classes, two on Tableau desktop, two on calculations, one on Tableau prep. It's 64 hours of live classes with me or Ollie, uh, which is pretty wild. So it's fun time. And then yeah, let us know in the comments if this worked for you and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm kicking my feet up this weekend now. This is gonna be great. Or if this didn't work for you or you're running into a roadblock or maybe you have a little bit, you know, different scenario, just let us know. Uh, we'd love to be able to help if we can. So thank you for being here. We always appreciate it. We drop videos like this every week. So see you again uh, next Wednesday or whatever day of the week you happen to be watching this. All right. Thanks. Talk to you later.